Thank you for joining me for another interesting session on crunch econometrics. This video is born out of a subscriber's request, that is a human allo, on how to estimate an ARDL model with dummy variables. So if you are watching allo, you inspired me to create this video. I'll be using a view stand for all my analysis. I have three variables, the log of Gini index, secondary enrollments, and domestic credits. And I've also created dummy variables here, you can see dummy variable, and I've interacted the dummy variables with the two regressors I have in the model. The steps to estimating an ARDL model with dummy variables are quite simple. Number one, you have to test for the lag structure. Number two, you have to perform stationarity test, then go ahead to construct the model and estimate it and interpret your results. So let's start with um, determining the optimal lag structure for these variables. So I start with the Gini index. You have to run an unrestricted var for you to uh, obtain the optimal lags for the variables. So I go to quick, estimate var. In the endogenous variable section, you type in only the name of the variable. No other variable should be included. And make sure that the var type is the standard var or if you have an earlier version of eViews, it may be written as unrestricted var. So click OK. Here is the output for the Gini regression. To obtain the lag structure, we go to View, Lag Structure, click on Lag Length Criteria. I'm changing three lags to two. OK. So the lag structure, as agreed by every other criterion, is one, even though I'm using Schwartz criterion for my analysis. To obtain for secondary education, I go to quick, estimate var, and I type in the variable. So this is what you are going to do for every other variable in your model. So just watch as I do the same. So here is the output for the secondary education regression. I go to view, lag structure, lag length criteria. I change that back to two. OK. So the lag structure for the secondary enrollment variable is also one. I do the same for domestic credits. Here is the output for domestic credits. On the screen is the lag structure for domestic credits is also one. Next I do for the dummy variables. I start with the dummy variable itself. I type it in there. This is the output for the dummy variable to obtain the lag structure view. As you can see on the screen, the lag structure for the dummy is also one. I obtain the lag structure for the interacted uh, term, which is a dummy and secondary enrollment. That's the estimate you can see on the screen. The lag structure is also one, as you can see. You can see here dummy, secondary education, and lag structure one. So lastly, I do the interaction term with domestic credits. That is the dummy and domestic credits. Here is the output for that regression. And this is the lag structure, it's also one. So for all the variables I'll be using for this analysis, their optimal lag lengths are all one. So next thing to do now is to test for the stationarity of these variables. I have uh, several videos on how to do unit root testing, so make sure you look at that up. But for this video, I will just take an example or two, then we'll proceed from there. Let me double click on Gini index and test for stationarity. I go to view, unit true test, testing from levels. My Schwarz criterion is info criteria. I modify nine lags to two. I only have 36 observations, so I cannot use nine lags. I click OK. With the absolute value of 1.10, so clearly Gini index is a non-stationary series. To make it stationary, I go to view, Unit true test. I select false difference. OK. So it is now 5.46 stationary at first difference. Secondary education, I double click on it. View. Unit true test. I click on the level button. I change maximum lags from 8 to 2. And I click OK. It's non-stationary at 2.60. To make it stationary, view. Unit root test, first difference, OK. Uh, OK, let me check for domestic credits. Double click on that, view, unit root test, level. 
I change that from 9 to 2. I click OK. So domestic credit absolute value is 2.63. It's higher than 10% significance level. So it is weakly significant at 10%. So I'll leave it like that. So domestic credit is stationary at levels at the 10% significant level. You can do the same thing. If you want the data, I have the link on my video so you can practice along with me. So domestic credit is I.O., Gini index, secondary education, and all the dummy variables are I1. So I have a combination of I.O. and I1 series, giving me the justification to use the ARDL model. So now that we have tested for stationarity, the next thing to do is to construct the ARDL model and estimate it. To do that, we go to quick. We click on estimate equation and we list all the variables that we want to use for this analysis. So you can see all the variables are neatly spelled out. This is the Gini index, the dependent variable. These are the two initial regressors. Here is the dummy variable I created, and this is the dummy variable interacted with the two regressors. So this is the way you should spell out, depending on your research question anyway, this is the way you should spell out if there's a dummy variable in your model. Now we go to method, I'm changing these squares to ARDL. So right now we are in ARDL mode, I'm changing dependent variable lags to 1. Remember that is the outcome of a lag structure test. And I'm changing um, option 2 to 3, which is unrestricted constants and no trend. Under options here, I'm using the Schwarz criterion, so I'm changing it to Schwarz. Every other thing here looks good, method is ARDL, so I click OK. Here is the outcome of the ARDL regression with dummy variables. You can see here the dependent variable, log of Gini, method is ARDL, and you can see here dynamic regressors, LNDC and SEDU are the initial regressors. You can see the dummy variable and the interaction terms with the dummy variable. The selected ARDL model is now 110000. What does that tell you? It simply means that Schwarz criterion is using one lag of the dependent variable, one lag of log of domestic credits, zero for secondary education, and zero for all the dummy variables in the model. So that is the selected model as chosen by the Schwarz criterion. So let's take a look at the outputs because I often get a request on how the outputs from an ARDL estimation can be interpreted. Remember that ARDL model is estimated by ordinary least squares uh, estimator. So whatever interpretation you can give to an OLS estimate is what you give to ARDL estimates. Simply give it the Ceteris Paribus interpretation. When you are interpreting dummy variables, you can see here they are also statistically significant. Very significant at the 1% level. When you are interpreting the dummy variables, interpret them in relation to the base dummy. That is how you interpret them. In my own model, the dummy variable one represents when there is no, when there is a break in the model. Y0 represents when there is no break in the model. So whatever interpretation I'm going to give this result, I must factor in the break dummy um, interpretation. So please, when you're interpreting your results, always uh, interpret it in relation to the base dummy. So I'll stop here in this video. Please join me in my next tutorial on how to estimate co-integration test and ECM with a dummy variables in an ARDL model. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Subscribe for more videos. Tell your friends and colleagues about our YouTube channel. Visit our websites and our blogs. See you next time.